I really feel like social media causes this feeling of FOMO, fear of yeah. missing out to really well up within us. I think what has affected me the most, like I said, is just the comparison factor. We all need to focus more on reeling back on our consumption and when we are consuming social media is it productive yeah. is it improving our lives are we finding inspiration rather mm. than feeling mm. depressed or less than how right. can we take what we see that's good true and beautiful in this world yeah. and allow it to motivate and inspire us to become our best selves without having to mimic somebody else just to be what people want us to be the more we can abstain from all of these things that are like super like dopamine heavy the more we can come back to our true selves and realize that the things we do have in this life are amazing. If nothing else, if we don't have the perfect solutions or answers, we at least want you guys to know that from our perspective, we get it. Maybe not. No, I didn't. Don't do that. <laughs> What day is it? <laughs> October. Hey you guys, Erin and Dusty here and welcome back to Eat Move Rest. Yes. So we are sitting down to have a chat with you guys today about social media. Yes, is social media good? Is social media bad? Obviously there are two answers to that. <laughs> Being that we make our living and our livelihood is all on social media, we think that it serves a purpose for good, but there are obviously downfalls and can be hurting a lot of people, including us. So if you're feeling the same, we yes. have some solutions that might be able to help you navigate this world to be able to set healthy boundaries around social media and its usage yep. and what you can do to make it a positive part of your life. We hear from so many people in DMs and YouTube comments who are hurting and especially it seems like after this new year I've had so many more messages from a lot of women who want to be married, they want what Erin and I have, they want children, they want, if nothing else, someone that'll share the same diet with them <laughs> and for crying out loud it's like why is it so hard to find this? I really feel like social media causes this feeling of FOMO, fear of yeah. missing out to really well up within us <clears throat> and it's a struggle, you know, we fall victim to comparisons, we fall victim to temptations, yeah. we just don't feel our best because we're constantly seeing someone who looks like they're living a better <laughs> version of their best life than we are our own lives. Totally. And you know, Dusty was saying we're inundated, just knees deep in conversations with all of you and we love being connected, especially over on Instagram and our DMs. It's yeah. just such an intimate place to get to know you guys. Right. But even, you know, I've shared on my stories this popular survey where you ask people what their assumptions are of you and then you get to answer true or false. It's kind of fun. Yep. So many of them were true, but many of them were false. <laughs> Ones like, you are always happy. You're such a great mom. You're so put together. Your life is easy. Everything's balanced. You guys are rich <laughs> even. I saw a couple of those. Yeah. And it started to make me feel like, wow, am I really perceived that way? Because we try to keep it pretty real. But at the same time, even though you're trying to avoid the filters, the Photoshop, the fakeness, the clickbait, like we try to <laughs> stay transparent, there still is that element of bringing your best self, putting your best foot forward when you're putting yourself out there for the world to see. Totally. So. I can vouch for that too. It's like, I'm only gonna post a picture if it's like my best picture. And it's like, not that I want to be seen or like want that praise. It's just that I actually want to inspire people. You know what I mean? So it's like, even though I'm coming from a good place of like wanting to be inspirational, I can see how it's perceived as, wow, this guy's perfect or this gal's perfect. And it's just hurting us as the viewers, as the consumers, because it makes real life seem so attainable. Mm -hmm. So as a man, I can vouch for the fact that every time I get on the Discover feed, it's just inundated with like pretty much like half naked women constantly. And like, I'm talking to other guys who are like, man, I just can't find the one. I can't find the right girl. And it's like, are we really like having realistic expectations in a soulmate or in a partner here? I don't feel like we are. And when Dusty brought that to my attention, what's on his Discover feed, I'm like, that's so weird because mine is things that I have zero interest in that I don't search either. It's every <laughs> single photo is a side-by-side -side of a before and after yep. plastic surgery face or a body with a flabby, saggy stomach and then a tight, 
tone Photoshop six pack core. Right. And honestly, these are not the types of things I'm searching either. I'm yeah. searching motherhood and food <laughs> recipes, smoothie bowls. Yep. So it's just, we're in this clickbait culture and there's no avoiding it. From my standpoint, <laughs> as a female, we've always known that grabbing the magazine at the checkout is always going to leave you feeling less than perfect because the photoshopped beauty on the cover looks flawless. <laughs> but I think what makes social media even worse and takes it to another level is that these are supposed to be the girl next door and the guy next door. It's one thing for Angelina Jolie or the, the hottest celebrity of the moment to be on the cover and look perfect and flawless, but right. now it's even more frustrating to see, you know, Susie down the street looking the same way. And so we're like, oh my gosh, am I really that imperfect? Yep. With cell phones and the internet, it is absolutely destroying the boy and the man to be. So for instance, pornography or any of that stuff, it's ruining us as men because our expectations are completely wrong. And so when we have these real life experiences of sex or intimacy or even just attraction at like a coffee shop, it feels like we have to settle. And when it comes to relationships and, and teaming up, we have this, all of a sudden, this high expectation of what we want. I remember going on a bachelor party years and years ago after we were already married and some of the single guys had Tinder and like legit, I had never seen the app or been on the app and I was, it like made me feel sick to my stomach because it's just like totally men, I feel like using women, obviously women can be using men too, but it's like we have this standard and if we don't like what we see, we just swipe onto the next one. We don't give these women the time of day because they don't look a certain way. We don't know if they are nice even, or like could they be a perfect wife? Could they be a perfect spouse? We just don't know. I feel like it's leaving so many sad and lonely because they're never getting a chance. I think what has affected me the most, like I said, is just the comparison factor. And not just that, not just feeling less than perfect compared to other females, but also the fear of judgment from being myself in this day and age of cancel culture or just not everybody being on quite the same page as you. And if you say something that you know is perceived the wrong way or someone doesn't agree with, then all of a sudden you're canceled. You get the unfollow DM, just so you know I'm unfollowing you. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> and it is definitely a blow to the self-esteem. And I think that's what causes so much of us to put forward somewhat of this facade, oh, yeah. um, this perfection, this fakeness, if you want to call it that. I don't think that we're fake by any means, but you know, we definitely put forward our best selves simply because there's this fear of that harsh judgment right. that we all receive on social media. And I think part of that is just, there's this invisible shield you know, being our devices, keeping us all safe at home, yeah. especially on YouTube where you can't click to someone's profile to find out who they are. It's a lot different than if we were all to just, you know, have more of that real, physical, intimate human connection, even on a FaceTime, if nothing else, in the age of COVID. Right. I think that we're so connected, but so disconnected, and it's causing so much inner turmoil. We're afraid to talk about it because then we're not perceived the same anymore. We're not Superman or Superwoman anymore. Yeah. So we've just got to learn how to find it within ourselves to find comfort around social media so that we can use it as a tool and not abuse it as an addiction. Totally. Most of you might just be viewers or content consumers. <clears throat> we're consumers as well. We also happen to be creators, but yeah. more often than not, individuals on social media are not also content creators. So from a consumer side, yeah. we all need to focus more on reeling back on our consumption. And when we are consuming social media, is it productive? Yeah. Is it improving our lives? Are we finding inspiration rather than feeling depressed or less than? How right. can we take what we see that's good, true and beautiful in this world and yeah. allow it to motivate and inspire us to become our best selves without having to mimic somebody else just to be what people want us to be? Totally. Yeah, so we've even seen that recently this year with politics. It's like all of a sudden I feel like I'm saying certain things or not saying certain things about the election or about COVID and I'm like, why did I do that or why did I say that? That's not really what I feel. And so yeah, like Aaron was saying, we need to really just be true and like honest with ourselves. And for my sake, like use abstinence in like almost every 
way you can. Whether we're talking about alcohol, which we talked about the other day, whether we're talking about social media and like the things that you look at on the internet, the more we can abstain from all of these things that are like super like dopamine heavy, the more like we can come back to our true selves and realize that the things we do have in this life are amazing. Like my house is amazing and beautiful and no, it's not huge and no, it's not on the beach, but like it's so, so awesome. And the more I can kind of abstain from looking at all of these amazing houses on Instagram or on the internet, for instance, the better I feel about the things that I do have. And you know, so while it, again, Instagram and social media, YouTube, etc., can be inspiring, like Aaron just said, we need to make sure that it's staying within like the inspiring category and not going too far to where we're letting ourselves get let down. So Dusty said the word abstinence and what <laughs> first comes to mind for me is I get tense inside, I feel nervous and anxious because to me that equates to deprivation. Right. So I immediately tense up and kind of cringe, <laughs> but I think maybe we could call it setting healthy boundaries yeah. and maybe having dedicated days where you do what's called a dopamine detox. Right. So it's one thing to kind of be like, oh, I wasn't on my phone very much today. I'm proud of myself. I should give myself a pat on the back. And it's another thing to kind of like maybe schedule once a month or once one weekend a month or maybe even a full week every once in a while where yeah. you do a dedicated dopamine detox. Right. So I think the primary <laughs> thing to detoxify from is not just social media but screens in general. Mm -hmm. Anything that's like visually stimulating really in, in that digital world is what's going to cause that instant gratification that rush, that dopamine jolt. So then when you do something like smell a bouquet of flowers that your <laughs> hubby gets you for Valentine's Day, it's actually <laughs> going to release dopamine in your body as opposed to being dulled because our senses become so dull and just worn away from these instant gratification devices. Yeah, totally. And you know, again, the, the point of the detox is to f get to the point where you're recognizing how addicted maybe you are to these certain things. It should be hard for you to quit. It should be hard to take a day off or a week off or a month off, something we have never done because again, we this is our job, this is our livelihood. Mm -hmm. We also need to set very rigid boundaries and get to the point where it's not just a detox once a month, you know, and, and allowing yourself to binge every, you know, the 29 other days. It's getting to a point where you realize that detox was good and I'm healing every time I take a break. And mm -hmm. so that every other day when you are on social media, whether you're using it for good, like communicating with your grandparents on Facebook, for instance, you're still not letting yourself get too carried away, whether you're you know, wasting time or looking at things you shouldn't be. Like just keep in mind that like monk mentality. I always feel like the more I can live like a monk, the more joy I will get out of like the everyday things of this life. In our recent video about cutting alcohol out of our lives, I think one of the biggest things with any addiction or anything that we feel like we are too heavily reliant on, I think one of the most important things is what are you replacing it with that can be a healthy substitute or a healthy upgrade? You know, like our favorite podcaster who became we went from an alcoholic addict to an ultra athlete right. and a lot of people are like oh man you just transferred your addiction yeah. but getting up and going for a 10 or 20 mile run in the morning is a difficult addiction yeah. but it's putting you in a better place right. so what can you do instead of jumping on instagram first thing in the morning when you wake up <laughs> that can be good for you that may not be the easy choice at first, yeah. but that's going to make you a better person that can help you to be more introspective, yep. to live a more intuitive life, whether it's the way you eat, move, and rest, or yep. just the way that you communicate with the world and with yourself. I don't know. Yeah, totally. So I would say like a call to all, get off of social media, get off the internet, and put your best foot forward and go to the coffee shop go to the gym, you know, obviously in the age of COVID, it's difficult now, but I'm pretty sure like even California just opened back up. So get out there and like be social for real, like meet real, real women and have conversations with real women and real men and connect in ways that we aren't truly connecting on social media. And you know, just like Aaron said, like trading your bad habits for a good habit, 
you know whether you're trading the the drinks at the bar at night for the workout at the gym the next morning just do the same you know trade your social media time with with maybe reading a book or having a phone call with someone you care about and like I said getting out and meeting people in real life and I think even more so for people like us who our livelihood is online on the internet going to work might mean making a post for the day yeah. so I think what's important is even if you're not a creator trying to grow your following I still think it's important to create rather than just to get on and mindlessly consume like totally. stimulate your mind a little bit by you know maybe creating a post that could be an open journal entry to create conversation and maybe connect with people who might feel the same way that you feel right. and I think that sense of community community and connection um, will really help to improve your self-worth and help you feel like you're contributing something. Right. So I always say create more, consume less, and that can really help your relationship with social media. Totally. If you have a purpose um, for getting on, mm -hmm. then it'll keep you you know, in, in, in alignment. And if you have even setting a time limit, stuff like that, I think any of those things are super good and helpful. So just a reminder that 99% of what you see on social media is not reality. It's <laughs> distorted reality. Like I said, it's either filtered or Photoshop or we're simply putting our best foot forward. Yep. You didn't see the argument Dusty and I had in between takes, <laughs> for example. Yep, exactly. <laughs> or Max being a nut who finally took a nap and we are so <laughs> at peace right now. Right. That being said, there is the 1% that is reality. Right. So for example, my cousin went to Harvard Law School and Stanford undergrad. Yep. My other cousin was a model. Yep. My best friend in elementary school was a prima ballerina. <laughs> and these are all either skills or assets or appearance um, traits that yep. I wish I had. Right. We all have things that we wish we had that other people have. Right. But the grass is always greener on the other side. Totally. Even the fact that Dusty and I are happily married, we're both vegan and we have children, <laughs> I would be lying if I didn't say that from time to time I wish that I was single with a cute little aquamarine van yep. traveling the country with my dog solo with my camera slinged across my chest just living the dream you know we all want what we don't have and totally. that's kind of the pitfall of social media right so whereas my grandpa for instance never really had access to what we have access to now, especially like I said, as men, my grandpa's result is just so much happier. He's quiet, he's calm, he's content, and I look at men now and we're just like a wreck. You know, there's so many things that we could, again, do to be old fashioned. And I just tell people this all the time, like how could we just be old fashioned? You know, the same cousin that Aaron's talking about, her grandparents had an arranged marriage. They've been married for probably 50 or 60 years now, mm -hmm. and they're the sweetest people on the planet. They literally never met before they got married, and they've lived a perfect life. It's mm -hmm. like, how could we all just separate from social media once in a while, or the social scene in general, and just be more old-fashioned? Expect less, be thankful more, and just heal our hearts and we will find what what it is we're looking for i feel like <laughs> don't be afraid of commitment you know i had a lot of difficulty with picking a major in college to sticking with a boyfriend who would become my fiance and husband it's like <laughs> don't fear commitment pick a path and go for it yep. even my parents who didn't have an arranged marriage came from a very small town with a population of 1200 yep. there was only 10 people in each of their classes <laughs> They found each other and connected in childhood, became childhood sweethearts, and yep. they're still married. So yep. at some point you've gotta pick a path and just go for it and be confident in your life that even if this isn't the life I envisioned, yeah. this is my life and I'll be damned if I don't make it the best life. Right, stay committed. So someone recently told me, men make commitments. So you make a decision and you stick with it. It's so hard now with social media, again, not just talking about the opposite sex, I'm talking about jobs, careers, and everything that Aaron also just mentioned. It's like, we can do anything now. Anyone with a camera can travel the world and make millions of dollars, and it makes it really hard for people to just go to school to be a doctor or a lawyer, or even people that are just gonna be plumbers and like mechanics. It's like, for crying out loud, these are all good things, and we need everyone just decide and commit. 
It'll make life so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what lot you've been given in life, just do your best to live your best life. So whatever your job is, if you're not happy in your job, you can find ways to be happy at your job, therefore making your job more enjoyable. Right. And maybe on the side you start to dabble in different hobbies or different ways of expressing yourself on social media yep. just to kind of find fulfillment in, in ways that are more creative. And don't be afraid to take risks. Don't totally. be afraid to be yourself because there's always going to be someone out there who will relate to you. And once you find that connection, even if it's just one single person, yep. it's so rewarding and so fulfilling. Totally. So is social media good? Is social media bad? Ultimately, social media is so good. We have been able to touch and reach so many people. Now hosting our retreats, which we will be in Costa Rica in just a few weeks, We've met a ton of people in person that we first connected with through social media and it has changed our life. No joke. Mm -hmm. So if you are going to be on social media, like we all pretty much are and somewhat don't even have a choice anymore, use it for good. Create something good and be contagious with good, wholesome, healthy, uplifting content. That's what you look at. That's what you create. It will all shift for good. So to answer the final question, has social media ruined us? <laughs> My answer is no. Has yeah. it changed the way we live our daily lives? Yes. Yes. What I would prescribe to all of you is in the morning when you wake up, ask yourself, what would I do today if I wasn't going to share it with the world? Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Try doing that. Totally. Or what if social media didn't exist? It's cool that it does, but what if it didn't? Like, how can I be old fashioned? Can I use a notebook? Can I use a journal? Can I read an actual book? Can I go meet someone for coffee? Like, let's also not let these old fashioned things fall away because they're so good and they're so fun and they're so rich. And I feel like we're going to be going back to those things as a result of our digital world now. I kind of think the digital world is similar to fast food in that way. We're totally. all going back to like homegrown, organic, fresh, yeah. clean food. The same way, like Dusty said, we need to go back to these old fashioned practices and just try to keep the balance in that way. Totally. All right, you guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. You know the drill, give it a thumbs up. Leave us some love in the comments below. Share your social media experience and yes. how you've coped with the struggles and overcome. Totally. How you've stayed connected in person to nurture those relationships and the relationship with yourself. Yep. Hit that subscribe button and join us here at the Eat, Move, Rest fam. If you haven't already, Download our plant-based ebook. We have over 70 vegan recipes that are so super good for the whole family. We will have that link below. You know the drill, eat, move, rest your best. Follow us daily on Instagram. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.